regarding audio modifiers, um, audio modifiers it's quite important tool because most of the times you don't want, like I mentioned, old particles to be reproducing exactly the same audio. So eventually you may want create audio modifiers to make sure that each particle is slightly different from all the other particles. Um, and this could be, uh, this could range from single things like uh, different gains to much more complex things like pitch shifting, things like that. So let's see what are the audio modifiers that you can uh, add. So within your uh, particle group, you can simply come here and select what audio modifiers do you want to add? You simply you could add several ones. And one of them it's random gains, which means that every particle will have a random gain within some dynamic range. For instance, imagine that you say, okay, I want a, a random gains with a dynamic range of, for instance, uh, 10 dBs, which means that in all particles will have a, a random gain between zero and uh, minus. 10 dBs and um, also you can have some random delays because sometimes you don't want all particles to start reproducing audio at the same exact same time so eventually you could say okay I want all particles to start uh, reproducing within the first 10 seconds so essentially you play and you're going to start having particles I'm going to remove the movement to have a better so you are seeing particles that are starting to appear and start to reproducing sound uh, within the first 10 seconds. Uh, besides random gains and delays, there is also random uh, filters. So this, this means that each particle will have a random equalization, so a random frequency response, so it's going to be slightly different from all the other particles. These filters, you can specify on what is the depth of these filters. Of course, if you increase the depth uh, in terms of the number of coefficients, you're going to have much more complex filters with, with the higher slopes and things like that, and also going to require much, much um, render time, or eventually could create filters with less coefficients, which means that it's going to have uh, no more, much more simple um, uh, ways of uh, changing the, the spectrum of the sound. Uh, also, you can have random bands, which means that each particle will not reproduce this, the entire spectrum, but only uh, a band of the spectrum. So you have some particles that will reproduce the one kilohertz band and other particles two kilohertz, and eventually you have different particles with different parts of the spectrum. And, if, and eventually imagine that you want to to spread them in terms of space or add movement and then you can create quite interesting uh, approaches. So in this case, you can say how many bands do you want in this, uh, if you say 10 bands, it's going to uh, create 10 different bands, audio bands for, for the particles. Uh, each particle, like I mentioned, it's going to produce only one band of the spectrum. Once again, you have the the coefficients of the filters because if, if as you increase the the coefficient of the the, um, the filters each band will have much higher slopes in terms of uh, response if you have less coefficients uh, it's going to decrease their uh, filter um, the slopes of the filter and also there is the choice of distributing sequence so if you disable this each particle will randomly select one of the bands, which means that eventually you could have several uh, particles reproducing one band, but uh, fewer particles reproducing another band, or eventually could even have bands that are not being reproduced. If you select this distributing sequence, this makes sure that you have uh, an equal number of particles within each band. So the first particle will use the first band and the second particle the second band and so on. So to make sure that everything is even between all the particles of your system. Also, there is granular synthesis. The idea here is that each particle, instead of reproducing the entire audio file, it's going to reproduce only a subset of the audio file. So 
this grain you could say okay fixed size or a random size if you say that is a fixed size it means this means that all particles will have the same size in terms of duration if you specify a random size you say okay i want each particle for instance in this case i could say okay i want uh, one second so by choosing fixed size all particles will reproduce one second of audio if you say random size means that each particle will reproduce up to one second of audio so you have this this uh, uh, grain size also you can say what kind of window window do you want to apply in your grammar synthesis because this is how do you want this uh, of course you can say it's to select something like a rectangle window it's simply start playing at the middle of some some file but probably you're going to have some 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 problems because you are starting in the middle of the waveform or something like that of course we have much more smooth response like a normal window but there is other windows that you can also use regarding these these two uh, checkbox over here the first one distributing sequence once again it's to make sure that every parts of the audio file are distributed equally between the the, the, um, the particles for instance imagine that you are saying that you want uh, a fixed size of one second then with this checkbox enable it's going to say that okay the first particle will produce the first second of the audio file the second particle will produce the second second and so on so eventually you have the entire audio file it's reproduced by particles if you remove this setting what is going to happen is they are simply going to randomly pick up one part some slot of your audio file and eventually uh, you could even have parts of the audio file that is are not being selected by any particles because randomly no one has selected this this slot of your original audio file and also there is this play on in sync so the idea of playing sync is if you disable this and you, you do something like this what it's going to do is okay you have all particles each particle will reproduce will reproduce one second of audio so they are going to start all of this in the same time reproducing their sound their sound and if you don't you add it any delay to it after one second every particles are done if you say plain sync it means that if a particle is going to reproduce the slot that starts at uh, 10 seconds after the original of after the start of the original audio file it's going to have a delay that it's similar to this so essentially this could be used if you want some you have all of these particles but if some particle is playing this slot between uh, 10 seconds and 11 seconds then it's going to wait 10 seconds of delay and then going to start and the idea here is for you to eventually have a, almost like a sound jumping from particle to particle because each particle will wait for their um, their uh, time position to start play, playing that grain and everything will play, play in sync so it's going to you are going to hear the original audio file but being played on different particles through time so this is also from the creative point of view could be interesting approach and finally you have this time and pitch that because sometimes you want particles to use with uh, to use a, a sound that is uh, lower or higher in terms of frequency so eventually you can change this you can change the the speed or the pitch because speed time and pitch in this case is uh, um, linked together and you can change uh, for instance imagine that you want to say okay i want the pitch to change uh, uh, three milliseconds and also you can select if you want all particles to apply uh, a three semitones to the pitch shifting or even to say that no i want all particles to range between the negative value and the positive value so it means that all particles will change pitch between less three and 
three uh, semitones or eventually you could say no I only want the positive value so it means that it's going to range from zero to three so this is a choice for you to to add and simply like I mentioned you can add several ones you can then edit them or eventually remove them from your project